Let me drop that on you again. We need to get rid of the carnal way in which we think about other people. Worldly standards do not matter. They don't matter. It does not matter which race a person belongs to, what social status a person belongs to. It does not matter which class a person belongs to. We all need Christ. Rich people need Christ. Poor people need Christ. Black people need Christ. White people need Christ. Hispanics, Asians, we all need Christ. We all need Christ. All races of people need Christ. Before the conversion of the Apostle Paul, he had only known Christ according to the standards of other men. He had only known Christ according to what he had heard from other sources. That's why he persecuted the church. That's why he persecuted the Lord and His church. And he fiercely persecuted the church. And this is the reason why. He had a carnal way of looking at Jesus Christ. And he had a carnal way of looking at the followers of Jesus Christ. And he stayed that way until Christ Himself stopped him dead in His tracks on the Damascus Road and changed his heart. My dear friends, we all need that change of heart that only Christ can give. I'm thankful for the day in my life when He took out that stony black heart and put in a heart of flesh that could think and feel and love God and love my neighbor. Without the change of heart that comes from Christ, you will continue to live in bitterness. Without that change of heart from Christ, you will continue to live in resentment. Without the change of heart from Christ, you will continue to live with murder in your heart because you hate your neighbor. But if Christ is able, and He is, to give you a new heart, He can do that, my dear friend, when you trust in Him and Him alone. That's what we need. We need that new heart. Verse number 17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Old things pass away. Thanks be unto God. Christ makes a new creature. Old things are passed away. Christ makes you a new creation. I'm glad that I was made a new man back in late July of 2001, I came to God a miserable, wretched old sinner. A bitter, hateful little man. I was a loan shark who sought to profit off of other people's misery. But Christ changed my heart. He gave me a new way of looking at Christ and a new way of looking at other people. There is a new course of life for those who are in Christ. Thank God for a new course of life. Once you are in Christ, you will now serve God through Christ by the Spirit of God. Before, you were a child of the devil, but now if you're saved by the grace of God, you are a child of God in Jesus Christ. You were once a slave to sin, but now you are free from the bondage of sin. Are you in Christ today? Verse number 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. God doesn't need to be reconciled to anyone. God is perfect. God is holy. God is just. God is righteous. He doesn't need anything or anybody. But nonetheless, because of His great love and His grace and His mercy, He is actively engaged in this business of reconciling humanity to Himself. Aren't you thankful for that? The reason men of God stand and preach be reconciled to God is not because God needs reconciliation, but it's because you need reconciliation. Those who are dead in trespasses and sins, they need reconciliation. And this reconciliation comes only by Jesus Christ. Verse number 19. To wit, 
that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. When we are reconciled to God by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, then His death on the cross, it goes to our credit. Making it possible for us to finally have peace with God. Thank God for peace with God. Peace that passes all understanding. Verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. In other words, what this verse is saying is be reconciled to God now. Be reconciled to God now. Don't put it off. Don't wait. You don't have the promise of tomorrow. God holds your next breath in the palm of His hand. He's calling men and women today to be reconciled to Him and do it now. There's no time to wait. You might not see next year. You might not see next month or next week or even tonight for that matter. You don't have the promise of another moment. God's Word is saying be reconciled to God now. For He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Even though He knew no sin, and truly, Jesus Christ is the only man who's ever lived on planet Earth who committed no sin, not one, in thought, word, or deed. Fully God and fully man, He lived a sinless life, and even though He knew no sin, Christ, was the sin offering for us. That's what was necessary for you and I to be saved by the grace of God. Christ was a sinless sacrifice. He's the only one who met the qualifications of being a sinless sacrifice. The sinless was made sin that the sinful might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And Christ did this voluntarily. They didn't take his life freely. He laid it down. And he said, freely, I'll take it up again. This commandment have I received from my Father. And those who come to Christ by faith are on the basis of his death, burial, and resurrection. On that basis, those who come to Christ are declared righteous with a righteousness that is not their own. Those who come to Christ, are y'all with me tonight? Are declared righteous with a righteousness that has no foundation within themselves. It is the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ Himself. That's the only righteousness that, that will avail on the day of judgment. My dear friend, when we stand before God, we need to have the imputed righteousness of Christ for all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of God. The only righteousness that will avail is the righteousness of Jesus Christ.